Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this Thursday show, recorded Friday morning in Australia for the Thursday show. I'm joined by the Dusty One himself, Dustin Henshaw from Stottle Scrub. Hello, my man. How's it going, buddy? He's going to call me Dusty now. He already said it. He's calling it. Now he's going to yeah. do it. Okay, that's down. Yeah. I, I, he's a man of his word. I can't get, can't take it away from him. I told him if he was born in Australia, he would have been called. He would never have been called Dustin in his actual life, unless he was in trouble by his mother. He would have called Dustin by oh, every yes. peer he'd ever had, yeah. and therefore, as a peer of his, I will call him Dusty. That's in, fair. In Australian okay. solidarity. Uh, my, my mother has called me Dustin whenever she's mad at me. That's that's actually really. What's good point. His, what's your middle name? Uh, Albert James. Holy crap! So you, <laughs> Dustin Albert James, get out from yep. under that table. You know. <laughs> How did Shivers. you know? I was always hiding under tables, man. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, still a cult man. Cult ambulance. Jesus, I always hide. I always hide. That's from what a I do. young age. <laughs> um, I was, right, wait, I was lying in wait, man. We are here to to hype you up out there, to hype up this wonderful community about the two big events going down this weekend. Now, we've chosen these two events out of a myriad of possibilities because they are stacked. This weekend is so, so, so stacked for the percentage of top players in attendance. And we're going to see that we're actually going to go into another banger week after this and another banger week after that. So you guys, please really want to tune in. Hit those likes, hit those subscribes. Leave us some uh, reviews over on the FLG network. Tell us you really enjoy the Thursday show. And of course, we always appreciate anybody who joins in in the live chat. Thank you so much for all you do for us and enable us to put on this this wacky and weird show sometimes dustin what have you seen from this weekend's coming because we're covering two events here we're covering iron halo and uh an event from down under event from queensland australia but have you had any experience with iron halo it's a pretty renowned event long-standing flagship now i have been uh, having some experience with iron halo i've actually been uh i think you know too i've been commentating some of the guys down there for the uh, lord marshall tv because they're the ones that stream it a lot of the time there are some really good players some really good lists and i'm really excited to do it again this weekend and i love some of the lists that are out there it's going to be a great event as always i don't know as much about the uh, australian one obviously because i mean i'm halfway around the world but i, I think you know a little bit about it yeah, I, I was looking like at the bit? names. Yeah, I was looking at the names in attendance at the. So it's a normal like GT for those uh, in uh, wonderful Brisbane, Queensland, uh, Australia, and uh, it's a really interesting microcosm there because um, Queensland is is renowned in Australia as being the strongest state. As in, if you wanted to look at the the most powerful or most prevalent single players in attendance, the, the highest density are generally are in Queensland. We've got quite a few players coming from South Australia going up to that event, and they're they're very high ranked in the Australian ITC rankings as well. And it's going to be really interesting to see if they hold up interstate or if uh, you know um, if they're just as strong regardless of state borders and uh, there's some really awesome lists coming out of that one that one also has a ridiculous density of the top Australian players so for those following along at home seven out of ten of the top 10 in Australia are at that event. And so we wanted to cover that. We wanted to talk about how interesting and exciting that little meta game between those top players can and will be, hopefully. It's actually really crazy how different how different the meta in different regions are. Like even like just across like a city in a lot of the provinces or states that I've been to, the mm. meta changes so drastically. That's why these major events are so cool to see the different metas come together and see them clash together and see which ones kind of come out on top. Well, a great one to say about the the Iron Halo, the Lord Marshall Conference, it, it, like, it breathes its own little metagame within itself. And it's, I really mm. love to see all the top players there jousting, trading wins back and forth. Who's going to get the edge in this one? Who's going to tech with that guy on the next one and get, get the upper hand? It's always always an exciting journey. Let's jump in to talk about the Iron Halo, though. Let's do so, it. For those for long at home, this is a 132-player, six-round event from Dewey, Oklahoma. Um, I hope you're pronouncing that right, Dustin. You might know better. Uh, it I. sounds right. Is that an actual name of the city? I don't... Yes, it is. Oh, um, cool. I think it's just up from Boise. I've, I've got no idea. I've got no now idea. You're just I making up anything. words. I am just making up words. I shouldn't say anything like that. I, Those I, aren't I, real places. Oh, come on. Adam. At the time, at the time of doing this, uh, the lists weren't live, but they have since come live overnight for me. But unfortunately, I didn't pull out many lists here. I did. What, what we're, we're going to start to do? We've got this huge density of top players, a huge density of people we want to mention. We're just going to do a little bit of an anecdotal, um, you know, a couple of sentences on what their list is, their archetype, more than anything else. Um, but the quick and dirty stats for this event. So 132 players. Now, you'd make some assumptions seeing 132 players, Dustin. How many of the top, like, uh, meta lists would you expect to see? Like, what would you expect to be to be the the top kind of density of lists? Or density In terms of, of the, the of factions, numbers. like, how, how yeah. many of them? Numbers? Yeah, yeah. I feel like a lot of them would be closer to, like, 15, even 20 in some cases. Even more than that. With 132, well, like, that's... <sighs> what do you think the top What do you think the top three would be? Like, the top three most represented factions? I'm not, not going to look at the sheet. About, I'm not going to look at yeah, the sheet because that, that would be cheating. So I like. Part. I still. I still think Drukari, Admech, and uh, the last one's actually a little bit of a toss up for me. I want to. I want to say Grey Knights actually. Beautiful. Well done. So you, the Grey Knights is the most populated faction 
Apart, really? apart from uh, apart from Space Marines, which of course get nailed it. Down I'm good at this. I'm good it goes this. Grey Knights, Death Guard, and then equal Dracarian Sisters. And Death so, Guard. They're yeah, yeah. sisters. I forgot. I was. God. I would actually would have probably would have said sisters instead of uh, Grey Knights. Oh, well, maybe not. It, it, Man, it's really interesting to see. Hmm. So I'll, I'll drop it down from the top, though. Six Admech. So Admech, this this is less this, Admech than we would usually really, see, especially really in this dry. region. Yeah, especially in this region. I can tell you right now, I feel like Admech has been more prolific in um, the, the Lord Marshal Conference than elsewhere. I feel like if I was to recall, I'd see Admech as being like the most or, or second most. They've got eight Drakari, eight sisters, so equal parity there. Six Orcs, 11 Grey Knights, 11, my man. Wow. Um, yeah, seven T Suns, two Nids, two Hive Mind, one G, one pure GSC. Oh, the hero, dusty, the hero himself, the, the dusty champ for this weekend. Um, <laughs> four Custodes, six Necrons, four Astro Militarum, one Chaos Space Marines, one Demons. So that two two Chaos players, apart from like um, T Suns and Death Guard, <laughs> well, CSM Death Guard, and Demons, yeah. all the Chaos players have just dropped them like they're hot. Populated those two factions. So no, instead. no Bellacores. Like yeah, pretty much no, no, unless they're the um yeah, unless they're in the Demons army. Yeah. Um, a single tower, so not even a, not a, nothing. Single tower, one single. Um, ten <laughs> Death Guard, four Imperial Knights, three Renegades. So seven Knights. That's actually a lot more than we're used to seeing recently. Wow. Um, one Asurani, two Eldari, two Harlequins. So five for the when you take out the Drakari, five total. Um, other uh, Eldari and seventeen total Marines. Five Death, five Dark Angels, three Iron Hands, two Blood Angels, one Salamanders, two Death Watch, one Ultras, two Space Wolves. So this is back to what we've been seeing. This is usually what you see, yeah, is about a quarter to a third of the Space Marines are Dark Angels. And we've seen that hold true pretty much essentially as soon as their Codex came out, haven't we? We have, yeah. And it's actually a little, like, we, we talked about it before, too. It's actually a little surprising to see them a lot in singles because we've talked about it before that they are very, very strong in teams, but they have a little trouble getting to, into some of the matchups in singles. Like, Thousand Suns are really rough for Dark Angels. They're still mm. really strong, don't get me wrong. It's just, I feel like they're not... They're not a six and no army. They're a five and one, four and two, depending on what you come up against, kind of thing. Well, so the the way to play into them has essentially been solved, especially depending on the archetypes, because the archetypes are boiled down mm. into kind of two things. You're you're all in on the Deathwing, as in like here's your three, yep. two, three units of of Termies and then some Blade Guard and then all the characters around it, which is that that one's been very solved. So that has been a very yep. solved thing. Because all you need to do is just either disrupt stubborn defiance in, in like turn three. And you've you've killed their whole reason for standing back and building that list, or you um, uh, stack things like mortal wounds, or just just go in and trade up like sisters do yep. into them, like ad nauseum, Drakari do ad nauseum, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but yeah, it dropped down the rest of that three iron hands. Now that was an interesting one. Iron hands are definitely a faction people think are on the rise, and people are altering. I suppose what we saw with the the John Lennon ultra ultramarine list with all the dreadnoughts has kind of morphed into this iron hands build, and I'm going to be that's one I'm going to be keeping my finger on the pulse of. It's also on the rise in uh, Europe quite a bit as well. Some notable players in um, yeah. EU and UK wielding Iron Hands at the moment. Yeah, but I've definitely dude. seen a lot of the Iron Hands coming up again. I, th I think they actually they have a lot more tricks than, than the Ultramarines do which in terms of the Dreadnought build. Then, although they all, they don't have like some of the tricks of redeployments, I think the Iron Hands are depending on the terrain too. If it's more open terrain, Iron Hands definitely have an advantage. Mm, exactly they're a little right. bit more durable and they do a bit more damage too exactly you're far less likely to lose um that single redemptor dread mm -hmm. to you know three dark lances if you're iron hands than if you're anything and else and one will be a character uh Exactly right. What'll be a character? That and he'll have like the cyclone missile launchers on uh -huh. as well as the Volkites and all the crazy <laughs> stuff. But anyway, um jumping into this as well, going a little bit deeper, is there any reasons you think in the meta that we would see GKs have this huge resurgence? Because the, the real troubling thing for me now is that I know sisters are prevalent in the Lord Marshall Conference in that area, in that region. And I would have thought if I was a top player there, I I would steer away from both GK and T Suns because I know how many how strong sisters are. Seven T Suns, six uh, eleven GKs and eight sisters so if you go on the distance chances are you have to go through a sisters player yeah almost almost definitely it's kind of funny too i feel like because you're right there are a lot of sisters players down in that conference there i feel like a lot of the sisters players actually turned into the great knights players and maybe in their mind they're like well that's one less sisters player because i'm out <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a weird <laughs> holy crap that is hilarious because that is uh, that is an absolute win you're like well I'm taking myself out of the pool yeah. <laughs> and going to double down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's an awesome perspective. Um, but why would you think Admech is on the decline? Do you think there's been any alterations in, say, how terrain is played or um, people just getting better or more or higher density terrain? Because that would be the only reason I'd see Admech drop off for a short period of time because people, I think people have acknowledged that uh, the better the terrain is, the worse the, the standard 
straight line linear admic mm-hmm. builds are yeah the you, we're talking the the six um balistari the minimum 60 skatari bodies and then people are checking more into what siegler was doing at the um, the or um what, what was it sorry Orlando, Orlando, the Orlando yeah. um, Grand Tournament by G-Dub, where he took mass MSU spamming Sakaran bodies and playing like a Super Sisters list in all, in all intents and purposes. Mm-hmm. See, I'm actually surprised at the decline of Admech. I thought, I, I, I would think they wouldn't have ri- rose up as, much, as fast as they did when they first started coming because they're a harder army to get a, a handle on and they're a lot more models. They're a pain in the butt to paint. Really gorgeous yeah. models, though. But the problem with the dropping, like, I, I actually don't know for sure why. Did people just get kind of disenchanted with them with a lot of the psychics that are coming out there? Because I still feel like Admech are very strong, and a lot of these lists that are coming into the meta are still going to struggle against them. Mm. So well, exactly. I'm not, I'm not sure. Exactly right. I think they're perfectly placed. I think they're still. I still think they're the, the strongest faction in the yeah. game. It's just whether the player base has the willingness to play what is the strongest thing there. I know, like there was a time when Tower was the best thing in the game, and not a lot of people had it in them to want to play that style, want to play that list because they just felt, I'm not giving myself a great time, I'm not giving my opponent a great time. Yeah. And eventually, you just get over it and you just move on. But um, that, that could very well not be the case. We had a, a bit of an insight by Bam Jitsu. He said sisters aren't doing it in the Lord Marshall Conference. Because you, man, Bam Jitsu, tell us why is that? Explain to us. You, you've got boots on the ground, a man who knows the yeah, scene. Yeah, we're curious. Um, we definitely want to know. Are you saying that top players have been taking sisters to these events to a uh, Lord Marshall events and not being, not getting the podiums, and so therefore they're just transitioning out? Because that could be a, definitely be a reason. It depends on what else is on the field too. Like, right, what are the what are the armies that uh, sisters usually have the most trouble with, and are they more prevalent in the Lord Marshal Conference right now? If you're looking at this right now, like ten Death Guard, do sisters struggle to Death Guard? I, I think they do, don't they? They do and they don't. Well, it depends on the Death Guard build. Um, yeah. They don't- they do struggle really bad into the Terminator esque builds, like the heavy mm-hmm. Terminators, heavy mechanized even. Um, and not, I'm not saying you know stuff like Mythic Blight Halls. I'm talking stuff like the triple PBCs with like yeah. 15 Terminators minimum. That kind of stuff is a problem because you go in with your things like your your Zephyrum, your Repentia, and you just don't do any damage. You yeah, can't, like, you can't punch through. That's and Morven Vile is Morven Vile doesn't kill a lot of the time. Morven Vile doesn't go into kill in three Death Shroud and kill them all. She usually has to pop her fight twice to kill all three, yeah. um, which is a bit, which is another big problem. Yes, yeah, so I think um, that actually, if there's so many Death Guard down there, and actually every single time that I've uh, commented on there, there's always been Death Guard on one of the streams, like almost every round. So I, there's yeah. a lot of them there. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's why they're having trouble. Like there's still a lot of players that are playing them, and they f- feel that uh, Grey Knights might be the answer to it. There you go. All right. Well, let's talk about some of the top players in attendance and what they're bringing. Starting yeah. off at the top, our top ranked gentleman in attendance right now in the ITC is Charlie Andre. He's the sixth ranked person in the ITC overall. Playing Dark Elder, he's got a triple patrol of Obsidian Rose, Cult of Strife, Cult of Strife. And it's, it's, look, it's pretty standard. We've seen a lot of these lists bumping around. And it's only really about 500, 600 points that really changes from Dark Elder list to Dark Elder list. It's getting very close to being solved. Triple Incubi, Trueborn, Blood Brides, Hellions, Five Raiders, and a Venom. And the rest is pretty self-explanatory for what mm-hmm. goes in them and what goes with that as in you like super archon killy sucker by etc etc amounts of witches here and there and everywhere um do you what do you think do you think that list is in a good meta right now is or is this just like an evergreen it's just gonna be good like the castellan list you know i feel like this one is gonna start to decline a little bit i, I think the dark elder need to start taking more into the chronos and talos build i think that's where they're headed this is still a very strong build but some of the things oh. that are coming out here it they i think they need the durability and like the five up feel no pains and just the high mm. toughness of the chronos and the amount of damage they can do as well well yeah they need to they need to almost go two ways now we saw what dark elder was before their codex it was just literally a mass msu army and i feel mm. like if they if you can either they're at, they're at the, almost at the crux point where their hand is going to be forced by new releases yep. um and things come up to meet them in power or seeming about because you know you know what gray knights kill a horrific amount of of dark Elder yeah units. it's a very horrific. rough for them like it's very every, rough <laughs> like their their worst unit just kills anything dark elder player has so yeah you can either go and tech into having durability on the board or tech so that you don't have anything you care about losing i just yeah disperse all your points as as effectively as possible i think charlie's gone that way because yeah. he doesn't have any chronos he's got minimum amounts of of raiders as well, well so he's got a decent amount of raiders i think he's got did i say five five raiders, yeah, five raiders in the venom yeah so he's going more or more of the msu route and so he hasn't he hasn't got any durability he hasn't even gone for um 
hasn't even gone for like a uh, court of the archon for some you know mm-hmm. playing while we stand um is incubi trueborn a uh, blood rise and hellions yeah and then just msu troops around that it's just yeah it's just gonna be good he's just gonna get points and uh, yeah it's very, and that's, very, that's very what impressive. the msu uh, dark elder do they just get points and he will be getting points he's obviously done it a lot before he's sixth ranked in itc right so he knows what he's doing with it and it's very good list there's just some yeah. lists that be, with 11 gk man it's, it's just good those those matchups yeah man a lot of dark elder are gonna die well, so I'll jump down to the next player. We're going to talk about Colin McDade in seventh, who's been absolutely crushing it mm-hmm. this year. He's playing Orcs, Freebooters. Now, as soon as... So this didn't happen until about a week ago, but as soon as I see a list that has Freebooters on it, I already think I know what the list is going to be. It is three Daka Jets with a Waz Bomb Blaster Jet, because you're a funny guy. Uh, four <laughs> Rocket Truck Squig Buggies, five Mega Track Scrap Jets, and MSU around that. So just MSU Storm Boys like and Commandos. Storm Boys, Commandos, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple of Mech Guns as well, because I like, the Mech Guns are really good for, prop, for finishing off a unit you half-killed last turn in order yep. to proc your plus one to hit army wide. I think it's a, a good call by all players out there. Um, how do you rate this list? How do you think this list stacks up against the meta? See, I actually like a lot of the list with uh, the free booters and I like having uh, the one single squig buggy with the uh, nitro squigs, I think it is, the upgrade, because you can only have it on the one because that plus yeah. one to wound lets you get that kill to get everything else that is exactly right. a lot more shots plus one to hit. So I think that's actually really good tech with it to have just one full squad of three. I think it's a full squad of three and then one of one or is it... Uh, I could, it could be it could be different, but I think they're two twos. Yeah, two twos. twos. Okay, so you didn't do that. So completely ignore what I just said. But either way, <laughs> I would like it if you did that. But I still like the squid buggies. They're out of line of sight shooting is so good, and mm-hmm. having four planes in a free Buddha's list, they do so much DACA, and they well, can just you know, go anywhere and shoot whatever they want. This is what I really love about this list is the four planes and the four planes we're starting to see. I think planes are in a good place in the meta. As soon as Bellastari started dropping off, I think planes just came came good, especially orc planes, which are quite inexpensive. Like I was taking dark angel planes because I was a meme lord um, and they were doing really well for me. But uh, And that was in that meta. That was in the meta of the freaking uh, dark technomancer liquefiers, for God's sake. Mm-hmm. They were still doing pretty well for me. I only lost one game. And um, the But the, the, the cheap access to flying units that orcs have, I think is a really big strength for them. And it's also really really good into things like sisters like that sikaran build that i just talked about for admech like drakari where they only have a handful of dark lances to account for you and dark like dark elder don't have any fly units as soon as you pop the raiders they can't interact with the flyers they actually get free reign i really like the choice oh well, dark elder that's why that's one of the reasons i want to see more chronos and tails because they do fly yeah, yeah and exactly. so do hellions so do hellions and reavers mm-hmm. They don't see as many of those, but they do have some times interactive, well, but you don't see yeah. them as much. And that's that's why I think we should see a lot more Dark Elder lists kind of tech towards the Kronos. More of the Kronos than the Tails. Tails are still okay to have like one or one or two in there, but the Kronos, I think, are they're the money in there. They're they're what they need to really start leading into mm. to get some of the better matchups and ones that uh, otherwise they'd be in a lot of trouble with. Like to be honest, this orc list would be rough for the MSU style of uh, Tark Eldar. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We've got Dan Sammons in the chat and we're going to be talking about his list later in this. He's the last one we're going to be talking about in this one. Because um, next up, we've got Ben Sherwin, who is playing Grey Knights. Now, I had Ben Sherwin on my show to talk about the uh, Grey Knights Codex and uh, he was talking about how the fact he's played a horrific amount of games in a short amount of time with this book and he's been nothing but impressed. So he's got a sword bearer slash uh, Blaze of Victory um, army. Uh, so Swift Attune Attachments, which means you're going to see two Grand uh, Grandmaster Nemesis Dreadknights, which he has. He's also got three regular Dreadknights. That's five of the bastards. Three Inter Strikes and 20 Interceptors kind of make up the bulk of his army. Um, pretty straightforward, like no really mess, no fuss. And I just feel like this is just an army that has just good things in it, doesn't it? Yeah, I think the Interceptors are the the go-to in any Grey Knights list and at least, at least one grandmaster and i actually really like if you're gonna tech into heavily into the the dread knights the sword bears is a really good choice for that mm. it really yeah, I, is i totally agree um so i've been interested to see the people who because i think the, the really the balance for for um grey knights is balancing like how many characters do you need to optimize your army but mm-hmm. then not having so many characters it let, doesn't have enough units because all the power is in the units now and i feel like um it's almost a reversal effect what we see especially from like fifth sixth seventh eighth edition where so much of the power was in drago was in like the the dread knights and stuff but now it's there's so much power in just five strikes just five interceptors yep. just a, there's, like, they do so much yeah. damage yeah it's and insane. Finding the balance. And so I feel like he's been like, well, I think four units of interceptors in this meta. When I look at this meta, by the way, when I look at the breakdown of these factions, eight Drakari, eight sisters, six orcs, um, you know, 
hell of a lot of Necron still and Death Guard and Custodes, still got plenty there. Um, still a crap load of Marines as well. You want to just kind of have deadly things everywhere, and I feel like um, Grey Knight's a really good list to be doing that with. Um, the th- the five Dread Knights. I'm interested to know if that's a meta choice. If he's picking that because he knows there's less admech around, because that's the obvious issue. Yeah, you take you take five dread knights and you lose three of them turn one because the bastard brought three units of Ballastari or something, or you know, um, that's oh, the obvious maybe issue. He, yeah. Maybe he's just really good at rolling four up involves. That's <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Um, but at the same time, people are saying the sisters are on the decline there. Now, what's really good at killing dread knights? Well, Repentia are fantastic at killing dread knights. I don't think they are. I think on average, Repentia yeah. unit does not kill one. Well, so, uh, we, so we've, we've done the math on this a couple of times on, on Team Canada because our sisters player is terrified of Grey Knights. Terrified. Really? There you go. Yeah. Because, that, because that's an that's a obvious thing you want to avoid. That's firstly, you're in a sisters matchup who can mm-hmm. deny you, who can just on, on a whim deny a third of all your powers. Just be like, yeah. okay, no gate, no sanct, no hammer hand. See you later, mate. There's three <laughs> of your best powers that you just didn't get off. Cool. You got some smites. I don't care. Um, and then, you know, you, they on the return, they just put like eight Repentia into a Dread Knight Grandmaster and you lose the bastard. But you're saying that's not the case? Not on average. I don't think it is. Because he, and we actually, like, we played these games a lot. We've seen, we've put, the whole team watched this happen several times. I think it was four times where Pencho went into a, a Grandmaster and did not kill it. Wow. That's, that's not a three. That's not the three plus in one. Nope. That's the four plus. Wow, three plus one. Absolutely. Crazy. Just fine. Yeah, yeah exactly. He, he would be fine. But so yeah. all you need to do is get six wounds through. Yeah. Because he's, they've got 12 wounds to pop. 13. Oh, that's a, yeah. There we that's go. That, the break point. That's that one. That one wound is a pain that's in a the butt. Point. <laughs> nice. I like it. Fair. Well, yeah, we go. There's maybe some misconceptions out there floating around because yeah, I was under the impression that Dread Knights absolutely loathe that it's, matchup. It's funny. Maybe maybe they're just afraid of each other. Yeah. Maybe. All right, yeah. jumping down, we've got Johnny Velasquez, who is our 11th placed player in the ITC right now. He's playing T-Suns and he's got a Cult of Duplicity single detachment um, army, four times five rubrics, two times five Scarab Occult, three oh Volkite God. Contemptors, Ooh. a small unit of spawn, a Vortex Beast, because... Yeah. <laughs> what a boss and they look uh cool. he's, yeah what the, the funny the, the number that i'm most interested in when i see um t-sun's players i want to know how many cabal points they're playing with yep like I'm, i made a prediction when the codex came out that people would want somewhere between like 15 and 20 and 15 seems to be more the more likely number than the 20 is i feel like people are starting to realize the 20 is possibly an overinvestment because you just mm-hmm. don't get enough models on the board you're playing too hard into the hero hammer um he, this guy uh johnny velasquez is going in with 15 cabal points uh this is a pretty it's a pretty nicely well-rounded list isn't it what do you think i think that the contemptors are really good in thousand suns but i feel like mm. three is too many and i love the vortex beasts feast how they look i don't think they need them though because they're they're there to do shooting mortal wounds but i feel like they yeah. do that anyway like everything else in the army does mortal wounds so i'm not uh, i'm not a huge fan of the beasts i get why people take them and they are, they can they can go off and then when they go off they they will kill a lot of stuff i love then- the duplicity rubrics i love the min squads of scarable cults that, that is I, I love that. I even, I even am starting to the spawn. I didn't like it first, but they're starting to grow on me. They're starting well, dude, to grow me a little bit. When it came out, I, I touted the spawn. I said, you know what? Have a unit of six spawn because sometimes you just need to buff something out and throw it into your opponent's face just because you need to slow them down. You're like, I need you to stay there for a turn. <laughs> just stay there. Right. Yeah. I'm doing stuff over here go and spawn was the only thing i felt like you could actually sling at your opponent that wasn't extremely expensive as in like scarab occult terminators or wasn't just like a mauler fiend that could just get one shot by anybody else's like, yeah unit. see i think actually one of the main things that thousand sons is lacking is they really need some good punch in close combat because they have really good psychic they have decent mm-hmm. shooting too they have yeah. good close combat but it's not it can't compete with a lot of the stuff that's out there is the problem and there's something that they're gonna have to get stuck mm-hmm. in sometimes yeah, well, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because they still have warp time in all intents yep. and purposes. They still have the mobility. They still have some um, decent, decent stuff going for them. Oh, I think Zangors are still quite good. I mean, they're not good. They're not. They're not a powerhouse unit. Ah, like, I don't like they're Zangors. Like a, they're like a baby gene stealer. No, but, um, you know, no, they're, they're, don't they're, don't compare them to gene stealers, Adam. Get out of here. <laughs> that is not a good comparison. They're, they're not that much more expensive than cultists. Like they're not that much more expensive than cultists. And yeah, but to, I just if you wanted a budget option that actually might do something in combat, that see, isn't I don't a rubric. Like it though. For seventy points for ten of them, you can do hundred and five for five rubrics, and they're just better. They're more durable, and they could do more damage. Yeah, but not in combat. They got no rend in combat. And Zango still have oh, the one rend is going to be a big deal, is it? Sometimes it is. Baby. The one rend is, is the big. Is that the big differentiator? Is it? 
No, nah, you're right. Like one one uh, Soul Reaper cannon will just like do more that do more for you throughout a game than a whole unit of Zangors, most likely. Um, min maxing Soul Reapers is, is what I thought we were going to see because it also lets you min max the um, Kabar points, the Kabar ritual points. And so mm -hmm. I've, I've been expect I've, I keep expecting to see somebody with like six units of, of five rubrics with a Soul Burner in each and the yeah. Infernal Standard or whatever for the extra Kabar point. I keep expecting to see that list. I haven't seen it yet, but maybe maybe it's on the way up, or maybe I'm just my fingers not on the pulse on that on that faction. No, well, it depends um, too, because like ten points, I think it is for the the icon. It's good, but when you start spamming it, it's almost like, well, I could do that, or I could have another squad of rubrics. Exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah, um, but I do feel like this um, this list runs a nice tight line between between that because it's only a single detachment, so he's got a crap load of CP to throw around. That's good. Um, they so actually the eat CP. They do, man. I mean, you can people look can look at the Kabar points as your your psychic CP, your supplemental CP, yep. which leaves them a huge pool of CP to throw at things like you know just just basic re-rolling stuff and enhancing a shooting phase. Always keeping one of those contempted dreads in essentially in dev doctrine, so they always have one contempted with a rend. I feel like it's a really powerful thing they can do as well. Um, and yeah, I think that's a good list. I'm really excited to see where Johnny comes um, because I pretty much know how the other lists are kind of going to go, but I feel like Johnny's taking the risky one. He's like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to take the X factor here. The one that you guys possibly don't expect. Yep. Or maybe, maybe everyone knows exactly what he's going to do. Who knows? Um, he probably the, does. Last one we're going to talk about is a gentleman in the chat. His name's Dan Sammons. He's playing Orcs, Freebooters. So you already pretty much know what's going to go down here now. Uh, four rocket trucks, four scrap jets, more heavy, uh, four again, three Daka jets, <laughs> one burner bomber. Um, he's more, he's even, he's even heavier MSU than Colin McDade. I f um, and I feel like, mm. I think that's the better choice for my mind. I don't, I feel like, so he's got what he's got like eight buggies four four rocket trucks, four scrap four, jets four. and four flyers. I feel like that's enough. You want to have enough stuff in the army to still like get 15s. Um, and yeah, I feel like I, I I feel like eight buggies is enough. Yeah, if you want to still have like a if you don't want to just be a gatekeeper skew. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the kind of the, the money point. And there's there's so many tricks that the orcs have, and they have some really good infantry and really good transports to protect them too. And I'm surprised we don't see more of that too. Mm -hmm. Just maybe it's because maybe when we start playing more on GW terrain, there's a lot more openness and there's a lot harder to hide a lot of stuff like with a lot of these uh, buggies that are running around, you might start seeing a little more tech into the transports and infantry coming out of them because even though they're open top too, they can put their shooting in there. They have a yeah. lot of tricks in there, but I think you're right that uh, the eight, eight on buggies, I think that's a good number. I think, I think, it's yeah, I, th I think, I, I think it's pretty good. That's four, it's four units of deployment and then they're all split up mm -hmm. and do their own thing. But um, I want to I would love to have uh, Colin McDade and Dan Sammons on debating the burner bomber choice versus the wise bomb blaster cho choice. Like, no, my, my crap plan is superior. No, my crap plan is superior. Um, it could be an interesting choice chat because as far as the lists go apart from a few little tech choices they're quite they're quite the core is very much the same and i hope that's not the, i hope that's not the case i hope that's not us already having solved that uh archetype but it, does, it seems so. pretty it seems pretty uniform though doesn't it a Take little bit yeah. like, when, 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 when you say freebooters <laughs> yeah you say freebooters and all of a sudden i think okay i'm gonna see a minimum of like six six uh buggies and probably at least two planes right, yeah, four planes. oh okay what is what is, the, what is the, what's the fourth plane though is it a burma bomber or is it a was bomber right? well so i said two i said at least two planes but yeah i, uh, I don't know if you need the fourth i don't know what the fourth is adding the fourth is um, though i think the fourth's a little much but i like i like it because they do a lot <laughs> they well the daca jets my god they do they are uh, fantastic they do so many shots fantastic it's like 42 I, I, strength six shots Dude, I take a Nephil I take two Nephilim jet fighters in my silly Dark Angels fly list, which are 190 points and do less than a Daka jet. It's Even though they hit ridiculous. Better? Yeah, but they don't have Ramshackle <laughs> either. So like Ramshackle know, is so give, annoying. Give oh take, my god. Give take. Yeah. yeah. I do get jinked though. I do get like a perma five plus invol and so that's, that's pretty nice. good. Let's, it's let's pretty honest. good. All right. We so it's five of the top twenty in the ITC at this event. This is gonna be ridiculous. So we're gonna pick a winner. All Dustin, right. on the spot, pick a winner. On the spot, out of these five, you know what? And just to, re and just just to reel off the factions for you, we've got Charlie Andre on on Dark Angels. Sorry, Dark Angel, Dark, geez, on the Dark Angels on the brain. Um, Colin McDade on Orcs, Ben Sherman on Grey Knights, Johnny Velasquez on T Suns, and Dan Sammons on Orcs. Yeah, there are some good lists in here, but you know what? I think with what I've seen in the meta, I'm going to go with Ben Sherwin. Nice, I like it. I like it going for the GKs. I'm going to be boring and go for Charlie Andre and say Dark Elder is <laughs> just going to still hold boring. Hold it up. <laughs> it is boring, but that's that's my gut feeling. But, but you know yeah. what? What's exciting? Orcs are going to get a podium, most likely. Orcs oh yeah, hit a podium, 100%. and I think that's and, and Grey Knights, you know, and T Suns all have a very good chance of hitting a podium. And I would, how cool would it be if we had if Charlie didn't win, if Dark Eldar was not on the podium for a week, like give us all a break, and we had like Orcs, Grey Knights, T Suns as our top that, three. That how would cool. be much better. 
That would be so that, cool. That wouldn't be much better. Let's let's come on. I mean, yeah. I mean, we, I, are we really sick of Dark Elder already? Actually, I'm, no, I'm don't answer that, chat. Don't answer that. I know the I, answer. To that. Oh, Just man. don't. <laughs> I'm bored. I'm bored of the two minutes it takes me to look at their list to see if anything is different <laughs> right. from the last week. And the week scroll before, like week four before. times and, to see the freaking list. And here's the thing: they all are slightly different, and that's what's annoying. Yep. Either everybody play exactly the same list, so I don't need to study anything, or like just everybody do something completely different. So I'm actually interested because no, right now you I just heard it here I, first, folks. If you're going to play the same list as everybody, don't change it. Just just copy it. Netlist. Everybody just netlist. Let's go. I put I put free scroll on my mouse. I'm just like scroll. Da, 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 da. That's the same. Move on. <laughs> and we got a dark elder player. Moving on. Uh, all right. Uh, we're going to jump down and talk about our next event. This one is the Normal Blokes GT. 48 players. A five-round event from lovely Brisbane, Australia in Queensland, the state. Um, so not the biggest event on the roster, of course. 48 players. Still decent size. Big, pretty big for Australia. 50-player event is a large Australian event, especially when... Oh, probably two uh, two thirds of the Australian population is still in lockdown. Um, my state in Victoria is in lockdown. New South Wales is in lockdown. We're two of the the bigger proponents there. But we had a 120 player event last week, and now we're following that up with a 50 player event this week. Quick and dirty stats here: two Admech, uh, five Drakari, three Sisters, three Orcs, five Grey Knights, two T Suns, one Nids, one Hive Mind, which is hilarious when we talk about the Nids list. Um, one Custodes. Three Necrons, two Astro Militarian, one Demon, one Mixed Chaos, zero Tau, Donut for the Tau. Uh, four Death Guard, one Imperial Knights, zero Renegade, one Asirani, one Eldari, nine Total Marines, the breakdown therein being three Dark Angels, two Generic Marines, one Death Watch, two Blood Angels, one Space Wolves. Um, what do you make of that off the top, dude? I think that is a little more in line with what I'm thinking, except for the, still the two ad mech is still shocking me. What what happened, guys? What happened yeah. to the Omnicide? Does everybody just give up on the Omnicide? So, drop I'll, it. I'll, like, you know what? I'm out. You know. I'm out. In Australia, um, ad mech have never gotten their foothold in. Firstly, okay. they're extre- it was very hard to get the new models here. Um, uh, we, that we were like makes the last- sense. See, that makes more sense to me. Yeah, there there is like a of all the armies in the game, Admech has the biggest kind of hobby barrier for Australians. Mm. Extremely expensive. Like we're talking five Sakarians costing you seventy eight dollars ish, I think, off the top of my head. Um, extremely hard to get the models at certain times, and then with with what the best builds of that book are when they came out, so many people just with COVID being what it was, just didn't have like the possibly eighteen hundred two thousand dollars to throw and go get that army and that's people who already had ad mech models who already probably had an 1850 you know list in seventh edition eighth edition um so yeah Admech, i'm not i'm not surprised ad mech isn't huge yet in australia it might still be quite a while dude five gray knights equal <laughs> most populist faction that's everyone is everywhere. just like and paul called paul murphy called this hopefully he's having a great day at, at gen con because that's why he isn't here the bastard um <laughs> Uh, but the, the people, everyone has the models to play this army straight out of the box. It's like, oh, new Grey Knight Codex. Turns out I have everything I will ever need. And off they go. Is that a thing, do you think? Is that why? Yeah, it absolutely is because it's so easy to bring it. And they're good. They're very good. So you, like, I think we've said it plenty of times before. That's exactly what's happening mm. with GK. They're so easy. If you have the models, you have a GK army, a good GK army. So mm. the only thing that you might need more of is probably interceptors, strikes. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> Everything Pretty else, much, we have it. I mean, most people have 10. Most people yeah. have 10. Because um, they, they can make a little pseudo Death Star in 6th edition using yep. t- uh, 5 or 10 of them. Um, we just had to uh, ask in, uh, for, by Mighty Griffin, one generic Marines, what does that mean? No chapter. It means I just didn't list their chapter. In, when they submitted their list, they listed themselves as Adeptus Astartes, and it means I didn't have time to go and check <laughs> pretty much which they actually It means which one Adam was were. lazy when he was looking through these hundreds Shut of Shut up! I, I work hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Checks in the mail, um, buddy. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, but another interesting one here, Drakari is still holding very strong. So Drakari and Grey Knights being the, the top seat in the podium. And then it all goes down there. Death Guards are the second. Death Guard, the second most populated faction here. So, wow. and they, they're the second most for, for Iron Halo as well. It's ridiculous. Yeah. That, that, the there's Death that Guard parallel. is still very prominent yeah. everywhere. It's Yeah. I, so why is that? Why do, why do you think that is? I, I'm curious your perspective on that. Well, I, I just wanted to point out it's the same podium for the top three factions of the Iron Halo as for the the normal blokes. It goes Grey Knights um, equal Drakari and Sisters, and then um, Death Guard. Sorry, sorry, Grey Knights and Death Guard then equal Drakari and Sisters, and then at this event it goes Grey Knights and Drakari equal, and then Death Guard. And then Sisters equal with everybody else. So the same kind of four factions populating our podium. Sorry, what was your question, brother? 
I want you to tell me why you think the Death Guard are so prominent everywhere still. Like they've been around for a while and I felt like they haven't they haven't really won anything. So why yes. are they so prominent still? It's very, very true. Well, I think they are a very well-rounded faction. Firstly, mm-hmm. they are in the starter box for 8th edition, and so a lot of people inadvertently picked up the models. Um, secondly, it re- their playstyle really appeals to people who want to get better at the game. Um, they're like a, a Space Marine army with a perpetual defensive skew. Um, and if you want to get... And I, I know a lot of people in Queensland are students of the game. They all look up to some of the, the top players there and take advice there. And a lot of the top players who I know who play ETC and stuff, they all go get good at defensive 40k get good at playing the game defensively yep. get good at the basics and playing death guard you will just get good at the basics and unlike um space marines you are you're playing er- er- everything matters there's no there's no double moves to get yourself out of trouble there's no jump outs it's it's you play every phase as in you also play a very strong psychic phase and everything is worth investing in like it's worth it's worth trying to play really tight in every phase i feel like they're well whilst they are forgiving in a lot of ways that um maybe marines aren't in this environment they are they still have the base metrics of their basic rules special rules are some of these special rules that any faction has in the game um i think they have a lot of nuance uh, and they're they're quite deep when you want to get into it um and on top of that i think they're just quite fun a lot of people uh, buy into those models enjoy painting them, enjoy playing them and i think that their gw has done a really good job with the faction in making them exciting while still being like the boring durable guys whereas the t-suns um I feel like you need to be a big brain to play yes. T-Suns well. You, like need, you, need to, you need several big brains. Yeah, ex- se- several. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, it's, it's a really hard codex to wield. I feel like Death Guard gets a lot of what T-Suns brings to you, as in, like, I like to play Chaos, I like to play a powerful Chaos list that has plays in a lot of different factions uh, and has a lot of depth to it, but also can just play a very strong linear game. You can just build a strong Death Guard list, yep. and it's going to get points against everybody. I feel like that's very good for a lot of players out there who want to just go and have five enjoyable games because you will you're not going to win all five but you'll have fun all of them because god knows it's very rare to see like death guard get stopped yeah no that's fair like death guard are very hard to kill and i feel like they're one of the ones that's probably the as you were saying the easier armies to learn the game with because you're not going to get get as many feel bad moments of oh i just lost my whole army to turn one shooting well i hate this game yeah exactly right (laughs) and on top of that they like pbcs i'm gonna put it out there i think they're better than rocket trucks Wow. Not for point for point, though. That's the get, issue. Get, get out of here. Dude. <laughs> point for okay. point, bucket trucks are just too cheap. But I, I was about to lay into you, but okay. <laughs> no, no. A right. little, little, little bit of bait. A little bit of bait. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I almost PB- took it. I'm, I'm glad you actually PB- caught me before I did. The PBCs are phenomenal. Uh, absolutely phenomenal. They are good. I, they are I good. pray, I pray that Lehman Russes and Manticores are as good as PBCs are when they come out for guard. Because right now, they're. they're uh, for for the durability of the platform, for the points investment, and for how much work it can do, as in, here's a backline, here's a backline artillery piece that can also be your frontline screen, your zoning, your aggressive piece as well. Um, really, really powerful. Like that's not something you can do with a Lehman Russ. That's not something uh, you, you can do. You know with what? A- you know what? Hear me out here. I think that when GSC get a new codex, Ridge Runners should have an option to be something out of line of sight, like the the squig bugs. I think that. Would I be think that pretty- sounds yuck. <laughs> that that would be. I, I think, think that is that is fair. On and the condition, needed. on the condition, they lose their feel no pain. Do they get to minus one damage? No. Six up invul. <laughs> okay, I can do a six up invul. All right. Okay. All right. All right done. Yeah. There we got a deal. Yeah. Deal. All right. Shake. 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 Theoretical shake. Right. Done. All right. I love We're it. Good. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Uh, top players in attendance. So like I, like I touted, this event has seven of the top ten. Now I need to explain why this is the case because this might be the only. One of the only times you ever see this in Australia, outside of CanCon, outside of things, but we have so many top players in Australia in such a small field. This is an absolute murderer's row shark tank at the moment. But this come across, of course, because of the the pandemic that's been happening and the fact that only only certain states in Australia have been able to maintain a consistent season. That being Western Australia, South Australia, and Queensland. Now, Western Australia has a geographical barrier. They are so far away from the rest of the country that they are essentially their own meta. They, they're their own self-contained meta. It's really always really lovely and interesting to see when they come over and how well they hold up because they usually do extremely well. Um, now, we've got a couple of South Australian gentlemen here. The top, the kind of the top couple of dudes um, are all either South Australians or Queenslanders. Now, and they're, now they're coming together. 
and they're going to fight it out and see which kind of state has the nuts this year. It's going to be really interesting. The top player in the tennis right now is Adam Napier sitting in first place. He's the TO of um, Adelaide Uprising, which has kind of become possibly will replace CanCon. Um, it, we'll see if CanCon runs and what happens there. But it could be our you know n- next pseudo LVO, the thing that caps off our season, our super major. Um, he's playing generic good deep. Dark Elder, three patrols, two times three Chronos, so he's following Dustin's advice. Um, he's got a lot of teched out racks. He's got four units of racks, and each one has either Ossifactors or Hex Rifles, which I find very interesting, as I think there's something that's getting quite overlooked as pinch-hitting um, little tech units. He has the Incubi, and he has all the choppy things, and he's got five Raiders. He's just got a good Dark Elder list. Um, what do you make of that, and how do you think it'll hold up when you look at the factions in attendance? That is the Dark Elder list. That is exactly what they should be bringing. It's teched out perfectly. I love it. That's what I think Dark Elder should be bringing to singles events. Even yeah, some I'm team a, events. I'm a big, big fan of taking out the racks. Um, yep. I think um, te- Dark Techno, Ossifactors, and Hex Rifles are extremely good. Extremely good. And extremely overlooked. In fact, I've written some lists for team events where we just min-max like yeah, multiple multiple battalions worth like 12 units of five racks in, all in true. venoms yep. all with hexes and just jump around killing everybody's characters i don't think um, you guys understand in fact if you if any of you actually watched um charity hammer according to nick Nadavati, racks slap so racks slap yeah racks slap <laughs> get ready for the rack attack um <laughs> and yeah I, i'm a big proponent i think they're extremely good and i think uh adam's doing it very 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 well here yep. jumping down from there we have mr paul gurney Who's currently uh, number second in Australia? We're gonna actually review his list. We're gonna we're gonna chuck it up for you guys because we ha- we've had so many of this style of list that I wanted to break one of them down. Um, so he uh, we got it up on the screen. Just gonna check. We do. Let's jump in. Let's do it. Uh, so he starts off, he states this is evil sons in disguise. Starts off with an outrider of Death Skulls. He's got a big mech with a KFF. Two times five commando, spelt with C's for some reason. Um, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> two two single shock chuck dragsters. Uh, three times five storm boys. And then he has an outrider of freebooters. Now here's where it gets a bit same samey. War boss on war bike with a kill saw. Um, with uh, what you see is what you get. Um, junk boss and the bad skull banner. Uh, three times two mega track scrap jets. Two times two squig buggies, rucker trucks, uh, and a big unit of nine war bikes and two daca jets. I actually like this list quite a lot. Do you? See, I, I, I like the idea he has here. I really like what he's doing with it. There's a couple things I want to see how he's going to use it. I actually, I actually like the shock jump dragsters. I feel like they're a tech piece that can be mm. utilized well because the only problem with them is now that they don't get the automatic teleport you have to yeah. roll the four up that's the only thing i'm a little iffy on and if you know me and you listen to anything that i do or listen to me talk about 40k i am somebody who likes consistency so mm-hmm. 50 50 chance on something it's not something i personally go to but i love seeing it here yeah uh the the, the mega trap scratch hats two two three units of two i think that's perfect i actually yep. do it's yeah, not too really. much I'll, I'll- yeah, I was going to say it was a, a, it was too too many from, um, but yeah, continue, mate. No, I, I I can get down with three of them because they doing mortal wounds when they charge is devastating, and you know you're going to get three d six charge a lot of the time because you you're orcs and why not? The only thing I'm really confused about, I think I like it, is the nine war bikers because I love war I- bikers. Legit, that was the bit that I was going to say was my favorite thing. My favorite piece to add to this, when you've got all this MSU, all these little bits here and there everywhere, it's just have one reliable punch in, punch in the mouth thing that also shoots a ridiculous amount for some reason. It does. Like they just, oh, Jesus, they just shoot and so much. it's in free Buddhas, so they're going to shoot even better. Mm-hmm, exactly And right. hit even better, because it's in close yeah. combat, you get that bonus too, right? So the uh, only thing I would like to see change, I'd like to see two scrap jets go, and then I'd like to see the the third DACA jet. Even if it was to add, be added to the Death Skulls, I just think having a third one's fine. Um, you said two do- DACA jets was the right number. Now you're criticizing it. No, no, I said a minimum of two. Uh, I said, okay. when, I, when I say the free booties list, I, I expect to see a minimum of four buggies and a minimum of two planes. I think three DACA jets is sick, though. Absolutely sick. But I'm not sure if taking one that's not free booties is worth it. So maybe that's maybe that's it. Uh, that, yeah, that's um, probably... Um, I do, I do, but see, the reason I want, I think you could drop two is because what I think he's doing is I look at this and I see a list that can play a sneaky while we stand, we fight game. Um, so mm-hmm. all two, two scrap jets and two rucker trucks, same cost. So technically yep. you could pick the war bikes and the two rucker truck squig buggies as your three while we stand, we fight. And you've got four buggies sitting out of line of sight 
um, the whole game, and then nine bikes that you can just keep back and keep safe all game, and just play that defensive list. And you are still throwing a, hum- a hellacious amount of things in your opponent's face. You got six scrap jets, two um, two dragsters, you know, three to three into storm boys, couple units commandos, and a, you know, war boss, and you just throw them out and, and disrupt the midfield while you get your fifteen. I like it a lot. I liked it. I can I can see that a, a lot more effort and thinking is going into orca list than people would assume. Yeah, I actually I do like that too. I don't think I like War Bikers as the uh, while we stand. I think yeah. a lot of the a lot of the orc lists that I've seen, a lot of the ones that I've tried out myself too, when they have uh, units of two in the buggies or scrap jets, I think it's actually a perfect number to be able to take a couple of the characters that can actually get to one eighty and yes. start taking some really good while we stands there and only yes. throw them out if you need to, which you can yeah, do they- with the bikes too. But I feel like the characters just gives you a better option for it. I don't understand the KFF mech. Why not? Um, I mean, I do, I do get him, but I'd much rather see like an uh, the killer. I want, I want to see one of the war bosses on on Mega on Shark Squig, whatever they're called. Jesus, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, oh, he doesn't he doesn't have a killing character. He doesn't have the a beast, the beast, beast boss on the Squigasaur. He doesn't have a, he does, he does, he doesn't even have a, a knob on um on the Henry Army one either. And I, I yeah. would like to see if you could add both of those elements to this list, it would feel truly well rounded. Um, it would. It? Uh, the, I think the force field is necessary when you're taking that many. Uh, buggies though because yeah, getting that, that five up in vuln because yeah. you don't have to be wholly within anymore you can extend it to nine inches mm-hmm. make it five up i think that's actually a necessary thing with all the ap out there right now because only having a four up normally because they're not uh blood axes they're not getting the extra like always counting a cover for each yep. inches away yeah. so it gives them a little bit more survivability and because it's not locked to um the clans either it means mm-hmm. it just filled out his evil sons in disguise uh detachment uh, <laughs> otherwise known as death skulls plus it also means he's Upset because he's infantry. He's exactly right. Um, and yeah, he's got the bulk of his infantry in that one as well. We're going to transition and jump over and... So, well, we're going to talk about our next gentleman, next top player in attendance. Uh, Wayne Russell, number th- he's ranked third in Australia. He's playing Tyranids. This oh, has, he's a hero. I love this list. He, he is a hero. He said, He said. Uh, he even put a... So what, one thing I love about Australia is Australians put little Easter eggs, little like statements when they submit their list. Like some people will add a meme in or, you know, they'll add, throw a little bit of shade at a, at a teammate or an opponent. And Wayne Russell put the title in uh, 40K Queensland is too easy. I'm going to play on hard mode. And so he's playing Nits. He's got Kraken. He's going Kraken on his attachment. Swarm Lord, Flyrant, uh, four units of 10-ish Gene Steel. He's got three tens and one sixteen. Then he's got a GSC detachment. Four Goliath trucks, all with rocks or acolytes in it. Tell me this isn't your hero. I love this man. Wayne, if you ever meet me at like LVO or something, come see me because I owe you a beer, man. This this is awesome. I love this so much. What is what, what cult is it? What cult is it? Um, I actually know? forgot to write it down. Oh, if you I guess, jerk! How I, dare you? I hope it's Cult of the Four-Armed Emperor, because that's what that would make the most sense to me. Although, would you think... Um, what? No. Dude, Vex, in, the, in the trucks? There's only one Vect left in this game, and having it is power. Yeah, but you can have it in a mixed attachment. If that's the case, just make one of them uh, one of them Four-Armed Emperor, and the rest of them can just be Bladed Cog for the exploding sixes, fives, Look, or fours, depending on what you're That's fighting. true. All right, you're well, talking to a GSE at, player, man. I know what I'm talking about with this. I'm looking it up right now. You get, Give me your prediction. What is it going to be? If it's gonna be that, for Goliath, I want, I want it, I want it to be Popper Prince, but I have a feeling it's probably gonna be Bladed Cog. It's Twisted Helix. That's the other one. That makes sense. Yeah, why would it have Twisted Helix? No, no, Twisted Helix makes sense. Twisted, it's, it's yeah. good for that because then it's plus two advance, plus one strength. Oh, of course, he's slinging out of the. Um, he's slinging it because they can advance and charge for one yeah. CP, right? Yeah, yeah. So it, I don't use that, that one. That's why I don't guess that one. But that's that's the one that most people go to. I'm happy I looked this up because I missed a unit off my um, summary. He's got 10 hybrid metamorphs, all with hand flamers and whips and rending claws. That, uh, that's I even better. I adore that unit. I think anybody who's playing Nids right now, get that unit in your army because it's just the trade unit. It's like, okay, uh, they're in a Goliath. They get slung into your uh, you know, three, five blade guard or whatever. Kill them with enough buffs through shooting and, and whatnots. Um, and then, oh, cool, you got five more blade guard. They charge in. They kill the metamorphs. Mighty Morphs kill them back. And you're like... Problem solved. Thank you so yep. much. 130 Nips. points for a 10 man metamorph unit with running claws and flamers. Mm. Pistol flamers. It is Pistol, yeah. such a valuable unit. It is amazing. How many and points? Fight and I closed it for some reason. I didn't see how many points they were. But um, that I mean, for that unit, for the value you can extract in that unit, you'd expect like 180, 190 points. But I think they're only like 110, 120, yeah? Uh, 110 if they have no flamers and no uh, yeah, special that's weapons. Right. That's, that's, uh, that's because what the whips, the fight and death is free. It's a free piece of equipment. You just have to give it to that's one of their insane. arms. 
That's it's so ridiculous. Good. The so only good. downside of it is they're not obsec, but who cares? Because the way that their whips work, if you place them, here's tricks. This is tactics for you guys. There we if go. you place tactics. them outside outside of the objective, so if somebody charges into you, they're not actually touching the objective, they're not removed until after they fight. So it's after mm-hmm. they pile in and consolidate, they can get on the objective. Take yep. them off. They're still off. Take of them it. off. Yeah. Pull down a banner. Like, it's Hold great. down the banner. Um, so, but the, when you look at this, you see a swarm lord, and he's got four units of gene stealers to activate and sling in. And mm-hmm. then you see this patriarch with essentially four more bombs to sling in as well. This is going to be a really interesting tempo game where he's going to sit at the back of the board and just be like, how many of these do I need to shoot out this turn? Because with Goliath, you can still shoot out to the mid board very reliably, um, even, even just moving a Goliath up. I think this is a cool list. Is this something no, you play, my man? This is something I would play. 100% I would play this. The only thing I would add in there is I want some kind of like long range shooting. Like maybe a uh, unit of hive guard instead of something. Mm. That's the only thing I would add in there, just because they want That's something right. to be able to trade into like, well, when you're not able to get into the, the close combat. But the poor, the, apart from the hand flame, is the poor bloke can't pop a raider. For if yeah, you're that's, on it. Like that's, 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 what I, that's what I worry about. You need something to do that. The Hive Guard in a list like this is just, they're the best to pop yeah. pop yeah. any kind of transport like that. So there, that's the only thing I would change in it because other than that, this list is exactly what I play. Like, love it. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right, we are going to talk and review another list. This one is Liam Hackett's. Now, people, a lot of people probably know this gentleman's name. He is very much a guy who pushes the meta forward in Australia. He's always innovating and always kind of staying at the forefront. He's he's the guy who made Mega Knobs good for Orc players. Like, well, <laughs> Tried to fix them, but great extent. Sure. I think you came in the top three. Great extent, whatever. What? Leave me alone. Um, I talk a lot. I mean, but this guy crushed it with Mega Knobs. He took him to took him to WTC in 2019. Didn't drop a game. Absolute behemoth. What were you gonna say, Dustin? No, I was just listening to you and trying not to comment on it. So I wanted to hear more about the Mega Knobs. Oh, because I was doing such a good job, wasn't I? I wasn't, <laughs> wasn't falling over my work at all. <laughs> premium Camilleri right there. Um, this is premium <laughs> content, guys. <laughs> He's got a single battalion detachment. It is Cult of Time. Um, a T-Suns. My man's making a bit of a pivot. He's Ooh. playing with Armin and Exalted Sork. T- one, two, three, four, five units of 10 Rubric Marines. Each one, as far as I can tell, has uh, a Sol Reaper Cannon. And yeah, that is what it is. Um, all with Temporal Surge. Um, and then he has a unit of 10 Scarab Cold Terminators. I think these are fully decked out. Yep, two guys um, with Sol Reaper Cannons and Hellfire Missile Racks. Now, I really like that you can put that on the same dude. Like you can have one guy with the cycle, essentially the cyclone missile launcher and the assault cannon yep. on the same model. I love that. It just means that it makes everything else ablative. Like you don't have to really stress. You can get down to only like three guys left and still have an ablative body for your your daka daka. Hundred percent. I, I actually it, well, it's the same as the Deathwing, right? Where you can put the cyclone mm. missile launcher on and still give them a assault cannon or whatever. Nobody does that anymore. But no, the point is, not. you could. Yeah, and then to round out the list, lastly, he has two Rhinos. So this is a really interesting list and not something that I expected to see, which is why I wanted to put it up here because this is totally out of left field for what I thought I would see for T-Suns. Remember what I said? I thought I'd see the, the MSU version of this where all these Rubik get cut in half and they're five yep. mans with, you know, a Soul Reaper each. Why do you yep. think he's gone the 10 mans? He, he took the idea that you had. He's like, mm, no, I need bigger blobs. So the rhinos for this is actually interesting because having 10 rubrics inside a rhino, that is that is a hard nut to crack. It really is. It really, really is, yeah. And because they're time too, it means they're healing. They're coming back. Mm-hmm. Like he has his own version of his apothecary in there. So th- I actually, I think I really like this because they're a lot better at holding objectives and just – giving the middle finger to anybody that tries to kick them off because they have so mm. many tricks and it's going to cost more CP to do the things he wants to do because he's got bigger squads, but he's only got a single battalion, so he doesn't care. He's got the CP. Yeah. I, um, I actually he, really like this. I, I like it quite a lot as well, especially as a starting place for um, for players out there. If, you, you know if what? You are, if That's are, actually a good point. I think this is like the Death Guard version of Thousand Suns. Exactly right. I was about to say, this is the reliable, <laughs> never going to get smashed or tabled yeah. version of T-Suns. Um, I wanted to see how many, I want to see if he wrote down how many um, things he points. Cabal points he's got. I don't think he's written it down on his list. I'm just double checking now. Uh, We're just counting it up here. Uh, our, produ- our producer's counting it up in the Okay, background. so we can keep talking. He's only got 12. 12. Interesting. Yeah, but see, I because of the stuff that he's bringing, yeah, I don't think he needs too many because he already can do what he needs to do with the uh, units that he has. That yeah. he's not like he's not doesn't need to worry about auto casting some of his abilities either. There's there's just I don't think he needs as much with this list. I actually 
it's a very defensive list that can kind of slow push in your opponent mm -hmm. and not worry about trading because if you don't well, kill a full unit, they're gonna, two are going to come back likely. Like he's really skewing. He's really skewing the the hero hammer vibe people got from the the T Suns book. He's in the and two. I like that too. He could take three and his battalion. He could take four or five if he was to take a couple of, of uh, exalted source and take a couple of baby sorks with don't take up slots. And it's interesting. He's just gone with the two. So it's like two and I've done. I've got everything I need. Um, really keen to see how this goes. I'm actually really excited to see if this is a good list, strong list um, and where it falls down. If it does um, the 10 Scarab Cult Terminators in Cult of Time, I think is magnificent by the way. I think yes. it's a really good. Oh yeah. Choice. No, that it's, it's juicy. Every single time that I've uh, helped somebody make, like if I've coached a client making a, a thousand suns list, one of the things I always say is it, 10 Scarab Occult Terminators in time is money right now. Never going to go wrong. I, I, but I usually expect to see in two patrols. I usually expect to see a, a Duplicity yep. patrol and then a Cabal patrol and then a Time patrol. Um, the Duplicity one gets like the the Contempt of Dreads and the the mainline shooting stuff and then maybe some of the MSU elements. And then the, the Cult of Time gets your chunk squads so you can get value from the re Resurrect and things. Yep. Um, but yeah, really interesting list. All right, we still got a bit more to cover here and we are running a bit along in the tooth. We like Let to talk, man. On our we do, we do. I got a problem going along. I don't mind. I'm sure the people in the chat don't mind either. Next yeah, do you guys up, mind? we Just have <laughs> we have uh, this guy who needs a title. He needs to be called the man, the myth, the legend, Eric Mathuris. Currently ranked number five in Australia. Now he has a Nids meme list. Um, <laughs> now he's a hero for a different reason. <laughs> yeah. Do you want? To, do you know what happened to how he wrote his list? I I want you to tell me because I haven't heard the full story. Uh, so he is of the opinion that singles 40k at the moment isn't that exciting, isn't that interesting. And that's for his taste. He's very much a teams player. He's currently the Australian WTC team captain, so the, the captain for the national team, international team rather. Um, and so he decided to set himself a challenge. So this is a gentleman who has who, he he was the first he was the only person who I know of who won an event with Grey Knights in the last in eighth edition. He won a GT with them. He went on a nine month win streak playing the Gaunt Carpet. He made that a thing. Um, and he decided on his list by rolling a d10 in each each portion of the Tyranids Codex. So he cracked it open on the HQ section, rolled a d10, and put and had to put that unit in his list. Did the same for the troops, the fast attack, the elites, and so on. His list has come out as such. He's got a Hive Tyrant uh, with wings. Of course, he's just a fly, good old, good old dude. He's got a Tyranid Prime, which I think is the one he had to take. He rolled a Tyranid Prime, had to put it in there. Um, one, two, three, four, five units of Tyranid Warriors. Okay, all good. Of them, At least, good. All of them. So four units of seven, one unit of five, all with uh, two sets of scything talents. All of them. So didn't even take yeah. shooting on them. Well, unless no, they, they always come they're, with They're, uh, so, they're so cheap and effective at that point. So I actually kind of like that. He rolled up the Red Terror. So yes, he's in. The, the Red Terror. Red is Terror is awesome. Don't, don't. I even have him over there. I love that he model. He is hilarious. He's got a Lictor in there as well. And three Tyrant Guard, which he also rolled. He rolled the Red <laughs> Terror and was such a boss. He was like, oh, it's a character. I'll take it. But it doesn't count. I've got to roll again. I rolled up Tyrant Guard. So he's got three Tyrant Guard in there as well. Then he has three units of eight Ravenous. Red Terror. And he rolled this? Some of yep. these are kind of synergizing a little bit I know, here. I know. Well, he's ah. the last one. He's the one that won't. He rolled the Tyranid, he rolled the Ty, uh, Trigon Prime and chucked it in there. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> just, the full, the full, um, the full rundown is from the top: uh, Flyer, Tyranid Prime, um, five units of Warriors, uh, Red Terror, uh, Lictar, Tyrant Guard, three units of eight Raveners. He rolled Raveners, by the way. Then he rolled the Trigon Prime. Had to chuck it in. Um, two single biovores. Then he's got a patrol detachment of Gorgon um, with a single broodlord and five gene stealers. That's it. Interesting. That's his little patrol. So yeah. I am gonna I am gonna point out though, and I think a lot of people that play in the WTC and ETC would know this too. But the Raveners and Warrior spam with the Scything Talons is That's actually good. a WTC list. It's good. It's actually good. People are going to be surprised and mortified when yeah. um, he just shows when, you all this When stuff. you look at this list, remember who's playing it and remember mm -hmm. it's actually not bad. There's some there's some jank in there that's like, you can laugh at it, but in the right hands. So, what does Gorgon bring? Gorgon is reroll once to wound in close combat. And it's yep. the, if they have toxin sacks, they'll get, the, like, I think they can proc on a five up instead of a six up. Yeah, he's got poisonous big. poisonous influence on his broodlord, which that's I thought the, was interesting. Yeah. yeah, that's his that's his warlord. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it's not his warlord. I think he's he's probably paid for it. Although he can't pay, it must be his warlord. You can't. It must be his warlord. Yeah, although he's got his warlord uh, listed as the flyer who has um, alien cunning, poisonous influence. Is that 
I thought that was, I don't know what that is then. I don't know. Whatever. Huh. Leave it as is. Um, but yeah. yeah, this is a surprisingly good list for what he rolled. It actually, he actually rolled up, apart from the Trigon Prime, I think he didn't roll too bad. He rolled pretty good. Yeah. Well, yeah, actually, that's not bad at all. Like it, I said, it like it's, it's a good WTC list. The Red Terror with those yeah. Raveners makes those Raveners really good. What is the, did he do custom high fleet with his that detachment? Um, custom high fleet, uh, biometric, uh, sis and pack hunters. Yep. That's it. Those things are AP two guys. Those yep. 45 attacks are AP two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if they don't not, you. not, not too shabby. Yeah. So be surprised, be, don't be surprised if you see Eric on the top table or yep. on, the, on the podium. That's it's um, a good. Do not be fooled guys. Do not be fooled. We have two more to cover. We're going to cover them a little bit on the quick side. This next up is Josh Angelica. Eng- 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 I apologies, Josh. PM me and tell me how to say it right next time. S- ranked sixth in Australia. He's playing a Grey Knights uh, with sword bearers and rapiers. This is the tra- this is what I expect to see from Grey Knights. This is um, two Nemesis uh, Dread Knight Grandmasters, four Insta Strikes, a Libby and a Techie, twenty Deceptors, and two regular uh, Dread Knights. Um, now this is just, I feel like this is the if anybody's going to be starting a, comp- a competitive list or looking what a competitive list looked like, this is the, this is the perfect bones of it, I believe. Um, the four Dread Knights, the 20 Interceptors, four Inter Strikes, and the Libyan Techie. Although, the Techie, I feel like, could be subbed out for a Chappie. What do you think? Yeah, is the Techie, what's he bringing to the table? I don't just, understand. I, he's, I, think he's, I think he's just there to heal the um. He wants to the heal Dread the Knights. Dread Knights? Yeah, I, I yeah. feel like a chap is definitely a better, better choice well, for that. Dude, that, that litany is possibly one of the most OP things in the game right now. It, that, especially in Rapiers. Yeah. It is just, yeah. it's it's broken. Not broken, uh, but it's very strong. Yeah, it, it, I think it's broken. I think it's too good. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, but yeah, I think this is just a very good list. He's got a single Rhino in there as well, if I forgot to mention it. Um, and yeah, I think this is just all around. I expect this guy to do well. He's obviously doing very yeah. well. Um, I think those are the two Those go. are the two ones to bring. If you bring in uh, the Dread Knights, you bring Sword Bearers and then Rapiers for all the infantry. That's, that's just exactly right. that's the way to do yeah. it. Spot on. All right, last one to cover is my man, Josh McGowan. Um, he's ranked seventh, and he's playing guard. Um, Landon Lions and Vestroyan are his two splits, and it's a vast majority is in the Landon Lions, and it's usually not the case. You usually see it the other way around. He's got two mm-hmm. primes, two melter command squads, 40 signs with various weapons, like he's got some plasma, some um, hotshot volley, and then he's got five Torox primes, and here's the ticket with Gatling guns, Gatling cannons, and auto cannons. So he's paying for the auto cannons. Oh my the, the god, that's so much shooting. I am such a fan of this. Um, then he's got two, so it is for destroying detachment, he's got two um, tank commanders with demolishers, and then all the trimmings, like, you know, plasma cannons, etc. Mm-hmm. And then um, 20 guardsmen and a platoon commander. That's the whole list. So he's got 40 silence with two with two command squads, 20 guardsmen on the ground, uh, five Torox primes and two tank commanders going around everywhere. And I feel like this, is the, this has such a good spread of offensive profiles that I just can't not like it yeah i actually really like this I, I feel like this is the the direction that a lot of the imperial guard lists need to need to go right now and kind of stay in this 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 area we've talked about before they they don't have much in the, in the sense of like cc close combat yeah. stuff they can't really rely on it but the amount of shooting that this army can put out is obnoxious do you know what i want to add to this list oh, if, I, so for my taste and for a list that i've been cooking just a bit of, a bit of foreshadowing Lose ten of the guardsmen, lose the platoon commander, whatever. Trim like maybe one one squad of scions and uh, one of the ten mans, and maybe one or two of the toroxes, and you add in a grandmaster in nemesis dread knight, <laughs> and a unit of strikes and a unit of interceptors. <laughs> or you can drop the interceptors and try and squish points and get a another regular dread knight in there. And then this, it, well, because that's what you need to well to round this list out. This isn't a well rounded list. It's got movement shenanigans, deep strikes, MSU, and a hellacious amount of a shooting phase. It's got no psychic phase. It's got no melee phase to speak of. If you could yep. get this army to play a melee phase, it would be mwah, perfect. Uh, not only a melee phase, a psychic phase. Yeah, exactly right. And that's what the Grey Knights would bring. Yep. Because you could do the same thing with Custodius, but the shield, like, nope, you know they how- don't bring psychic. That's exactly right. Do you know how bad I feel? I, I was watching. A, I was watching an Art of War uh, uh, battle report the other day, and a shield captain on on. Oh, Dawn Eagle Jet Bike went into, te- got charged by 10 um, Necron warriors, yeah? 20. 20. Sorry, it was 20. 20. You're right. It was and 20. He, and none of them, no, not a single one none died. None of them died. None, none of them died. died. It's so bad. I saw so the bad. same one. Yeah. It's so bad. Just, ah, uh, oh, so can painful you, can you, watch. Like, okay, so, so just to put it in perspective, yeah, we've got 60 point succubuses going out <laughs> and getting close to soloing at night. And then a freaking oh, shield. 65, Adam, come on. The epitome of human creation below a Primarch 
can't consistently kill a Necromoria. Yeah? <laughs> no, How good is no, that? <laughs> to be fair, he did kill them. They just kept coming back. Uh, he killed he three, killed dude. He killed like, he killed, like he killed, four. Yeah, he killed, like, five like, rounds of four, combat. And then he they came back. He killed less than one a turn. He went. He killed a one combat phase. He didn't it kill was, any. It was atrocious. It was. I felt so bad for John. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> because I just it couldn't believe well. it. Well, Richard was just rolling really well. But still, yeah. that's not happening. Like, come on. Yeah, Seagler is a fiend. Like, if you don't think dice roll well for some people, Deagler is like no, just, blessed he, by the dice gods. Yeah, he is he really is. He is the promised one. Um, and so yeah, that is that is seven of the top ten. We wanted to go through the archetypes for all of them. Now, are you, are you do you have the do you have it in here to pick a winner here? It's a small, it's a Shark Tank. A lot of these guys are you knock freaking each other kidding? Out very early. You don't think I could pick? I can't pick a winner to this one. I know exactly who's going to win this. It's Wayne. Eric, hundred uh, percent. Oh, Wayne. Wayne. Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely, right. Wayne. Wayne Russell is your pick. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Um, I'm I'm struggling here because I would usually have picked either Eric or Liam, but I feel like Eric uh, Eric and Liam have a really interesting game into each other. I don't know who wins that game. The multi wound Liam, Liam is the thousands. The, the T Suns we reviewed. The the big chunky T Suns units. Which are actually kind of resilient against all the single damage. I believe that Eric has the like he he has the talent to be able to beat that, but I For feel sure. like the the list the list difference is just too much. The the T Suns have such an advantage against that list. Do you know well, because- funny enough, the most effective unit in that matchup would be? Do you know what do you know which one it is, Adam? Uh, what in in between the, the two of them? Between the two of them, from from Eric, the most effective unit. From, oh, from, no, no. For uh, Eric, the bio, the bio force. No, the Trigon. Oh really? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Please that's don't right. tell me that. That's, that's right. hilarious. Negative three d six damage, buddy. That's hilarious. <laughs> like seven attacks. That's that's the uh, thing that's going to clear out those units. Fight twice. Yuck. <laughs> Yuck, yuck, yuck. Because um, yeah, I'd, I'd usually pick one of those two gentlemen because in all honesty, they win just about everything they go to. Um, but this is a really interesting interesting thing. Um, I'm going to throw it out there and say, Liam, I'm going to put Liam as, as, as finish. I'm going to put T-Suns win this event. Whoa. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm just, I don't know. Well, they're I'm, not going to beat my, uh, they're not going to be my nids, but I'm gonna <laughs> I feel like anybody in this, in this, of the seven lists we, we read out could easily win this. I'm just going to pick Liam just because I'd love to see okay. T-Suns get up. Um, but also like we have, like just listing those, we have a Dark Elder player, or player, a Nids player, a T-Suns player, another Nids player, a Grey Knights player, and a Guard player. That's such a diversity. That's awesome. Um, I love that. that Thank you, Australia, for being Australia. Well done, Australia. I, I applaud you. This is me applauding you right now. Because you know what we well are? Done. We are perpetually interesting because we're so wonky. I love it. Perpetually interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's, that should be the slogan for that continent. Australia. Perpetually interesting. Done. Put because that on our, a billboard, our, man. Our list, our list Every airport our- in Australia needs to have that billboard. <laughs> Yeah, our, our army lists are wonky and our animals deadly. Oh, yeah, <laughs> um, Perfect. This is awesome. Print it. Print it. <laughs> Print it. I'll, I'll take my check in the mail. Australian tourism. Um, we're gonna go into Fugo. We still got right. Fugo to wrap up. We're, we're gonna we're into the into the into the bottom of the innings here. Um, oh, yeah. We'll do one minute because only two of us. We're just gonna do one minute Fugo. If you fill up the whole minute, Dustin, you know it is what it is. I'm not, I can't do that to you. That's not. Fair. Yes, you can. You can. No, you I should. can't. All right. Um, ready when you are. Let's hit that clock. All right, one change you want to see in tenth edition from ninth. From ninth, you, am I going first? Yes, you are. I think I would like to see, and this isn't a knock, but I want to see consistent releases for Ooh, codexes. Fair. Fair, fair, fair. That's that's the only. I I love where ninth is. I it's just the delay. And again, I'm not not knocking against them. I it's not always their fault, but I would like to see consistent releases so people know when it's coming. And I want to know like ahead of time when it's going to be so i i know when i can look forward to it i like that i, I like that I, that's what i want to see i was going to say i would love to see all the codes come out at the start of the edition but it's never going to happen so my one i'm going to talk I very fast that. is i want to see tiered missions i want to see baseline mission as in just a primary and then as you get higher into the missions and more complexity for players who are more interested more competitive you add different elements on and as you go to the top you get something that is like what we play right now but with another element say let's say not not kill points but something of the ilk of that or a maelstrom added onto it at the top and i want to see i want to see missions that grow with the community rather than okay. one size fits all like all right. it. next up for you biggest loser character in the fluff in all the 40k lore the biggest loser in fluff yeah. wise, I, I 
So many people are going to hate me for saying this. You know who I think the biggest loser is? You going to say Aladdin? No, I'm going to say the Emperor. Mm. That's right. That's right. The guy uh, just right, sits yeah. on his butt all day. What the? What is he doing? Is he even alive? Is he even alive? Does he even care? Does he even care? He's got <laughs> so many people out there. He's supposed to be really. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't even eat cake for his birthday. Like what? What does he do? What um, a loser. I'm gonna- I'm going to put it out there. My biggest loser is Logar. Everyone knows what he <laughs> Failed miserably. Let himself get led by the nose. Believed, like, literally believed and bought into the pyramid schemes at every turn. Every turn. At every okay. chance he was saying, here, here, buy this new crockpot. And he was like, yes, I will have nine, please. And my legion will have 20,000. Um, but yeah, Logar's for me. Okay. I, I, I'm done with that one. On to the next one. Uh, where will T-Suns end up in the competitive spectrum? You know, the rankings from like C-B-A-S. Where do you think they're going to end up? Is it going to be like, we mean after all the Codex has come out or around uh, now? Let's let's say from your impressions of them right now, how strong do you think? I think they're going to be A. They're not yep. quite S, but they're very strong and they'll have the tools to beat a lot of the S tiers, but I don't think they themselves are going to be S tier. And other, other than that too, they're so complicated to use. There's going to be so mm-hmm. few people using them because they're that complicated. I think I think they'll they'll settle confident like high A tier. I was going to say high B. I was going to say, I was going to say high B or lowest A, just because mm-hmm. of what you said there. The best players in the world are going to be able to absolutely crush faces with this. People who are studied or faction specialists with T-Suns are going to do very well. But it is not a list that is not a faction that just anybody can pick up. Like Little Timmy, if Little Timmy walks into a G-Dub, should not pick T-Suns, even if he thinks they're the previous, because they are just just that hard to wield. I hope all the shots are listening. Yeah, and by extent of the fact that they don't play in every faction or they don't have a melee face, they're just very unforgiving. All right, same question, but for GKs. Dustin? See, I think... GKs are around the same, the same as the Thousand Suns. Now, it's not because the GK are any real, any worse or any better. I feel like the, they they just have a lot more counterplay to them than the, the Thousand Suns do. We're just seeing a lot more GKs out there right now, so I still think they're going to be high A tier as well. Again, a lot of tricks to beat the S tier, but they just they fall short of being like uh, being the same mm. venue as Drakari and. Add Mac and some of the other armies, I think. Yeah. So I, f- I feel like Grey Knights have all the tools, but it's the matchups that are the worry. So yeah. They just have bad matchups. They just have things they can't do. Now, a lot of people say that um, because they're not, they don't have the durability of things like Blade Guard, they don't have mm-hmm. the baseline durability of a lot of other Marine factions like Vanguard Vets and stuff, that they won't be the same. But here's the thing I contend with, I contend you, I fight you on that <laughs> point, sir, and say that everything dies in this edition all the time. And the durability mm-hmm. Space Marines have doesn't matter. So if you're going to be crazy and explosive, might as well be. That's why I put them solidly in the A tier. You might as well be gray if you're going to be praised and explosive. Exactly right. All right, last one. Best profession in the Imperium, non-combat profession. So if you were going to have any profession in the 41st millennium, what would it be? And what do you think would be the best one to have? You go first. Non-combat. Non-combat. Yeah, you go first. So you can't be a space marine. You're just a regular old bog standard human. I want to be the guy who blesses their bolt guns. Because I feel like you don't have to fight. But you're around the exciting stuff. You'll be well looked after because you're attached to like a Space Marine Legion and come with some reverence. And all you have to do is just like do the cross on their on their bolts. Oh yeah, your your bolts are blessed. Off you go, kill some Xenos. Yeah, right? but it just seems like I, such an easy job. I feel like I feel like those kind of guys would be the ones that would come back if they if their gun didn't kill enough stuff and blame you for it. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be with like you wouldn't want to be with Blood Angels. You want to be with like the Ultras. They'll treat you good, you know? They'll look after you. Uh, I, mine's easy. I, I think I figured it out. Air traffic controller on uh, Terra Prime. <laughs> there you go. There's no, water on, there's no water on Terra, though. You'll be a thirsty boy. You'll be <gasps> dusty. Ow! Oh, we got there. We got there. We're getting to end. We have come full circle. And on that note, thank you so much for joining us in the chat. Uh, Wolf Priest Carl has been with us from the start. Nogal Matthew, always a champ. KR Quinn, love you guys. Um, thank you for, for everyone who's chatted, everyone who's tuned in. Hope you guys have enjoyed this show. Um, dude, anything you'd like to say before we check out? Uh, we're both going to be streaming a little bit of the Iron Halo. What games are you on for, brother? And where can we catch you? I will be on uh, round five with Scary himself, the Scarred one for uh, Iron Halo. I'm really excited. I like. I always love commentating and I like commentating with uh Scaria because we, we play off each other really well kind of kind of like you and me adam i'm, I'm looking yeah. forward to it 
Well, I'm actually streaming with Sky as well. I've got Game 3 and Game 6, and you can find all that over on the Lord Marshall uh, TV over on Twitch. We're going to be streaming all the games there. The lovely Jason Horn, Whelan, and Dylan getting us through the Iron Halo 6 rounds of an extremely stacked event. And if you're on with me, um, it's going to be on my Saturday, uh, sorry, Sunday morning and my Monday morning. I'm going to give you guys updates on the Normal Blokes GT as we go. I'll, I'll update and recap a bit of what occurred at that event. I'll slide it in there. So please tune in, check out Lord Marshall Conference over on Twitch. Join in thank you so much for enjoying the show dustin love your work brother i feel like we've held this up on our shoulders you know i like atlas God, just, holding up the world uh, it's all it's all on our shoulders and we're carrying it, it and we're carrying it well together i love being here we'll talk again uh, next time for sure take care man good night god bless everybody look after yourselves look after each other and we'll see you next week